You're listening to LibraryCast, your library podcast with me, Jeremy Thompson-Smith, Somerset Library's Outreach Officer for the Mendips, bringing to you Libraries from Home. On this week's LibraryCast, we welcome Beth Porter and Ben Please from the Bookshop Band. Tell us a bit about the Bookshop Band and what inspired the creation of the first page. Well, we started in 2010. Uh, so actually it's our 10th anniversary this year and we started because our local bookshop, independent bookshop in Bath, which was Mr B's Emporium of Reading Delight, they were just kind of reinventing what they did for author events there and rather than just the author coming in and reading an extract and signing copies, they wanted to create an experience around it and so I'd been selling my previous band CDs in their shop so they asked me um, if I'd Put together a little group to provide some music as part of this sort of literary experience that they were doing and so I contacted Beth and Poppy um, who were two musicians and songwriters that I'd met fairly recently um, who I was quite inspired by their writing and uh, we kind of agreed to form this just little project for a few sessions at Mr B's writing songs inspired by the literary theme of the night and we did that for five events there and got an album out of it and it was wonderful and then it just continued like we started to play you know get asked to play in other bookshops and suddenly our repertoire grew and grew and grew and we released an album and came up with a name the bookshop band because that was where we existed and where the context of our songwriting was and it's kind of just spiraled from there based on that idea of just collaborating with a bookshop and writing some songs inspired by books. So I was intrigued to find out what the Bookshop Band have been doing to mark the recent Independent Bookshop Week and what they did to support independent bookshops. Um, So we did a special Independent Booksellers Week concert and just kind of um, reached out to lots of bookshops and what we can do when we do a, a live Facebook show is to to appear on lots of other people's on especially the bookshops um, kind of live streams so we, we've kind of reached out to quite a few people and and we've been able to donate a bit of money um, from our shows that we've that we've managed to get as well it's something that we think of every year we wrote a song for it a few years ago for the books in my bag campaign as well so we played that on Friday night yeah, it's like a real celebration of of uh, bookshops edition. So uh, we yeah. tried to pick books and songs that were particularly relevant to to books and selling books. I'm wondering if that song was called "A Shop with Books In." It is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a shop with books in. Yeah, it, it brings happy tears to my eyes uh, where oh my you could think about coming into a bookshop or a library, having recommendations from booksellers and librarians that just get to know you as a person what Mm. your interests are and as well as recommending books that maybe they think or we think you might be interested in books to take you a little bit out just ever so gently with a velvet Mm. pillow into a a, out of your comfort zone i think that's what mr bees has been really good for for us i think it's taken us out of our comfort zone a lot by getting us to read books that we wouldn't normally pick off the shelf but have been kind of recommended mm. to other people they're very passionate about these you know each each of the different sellers at Mr B's and lots of other bookshops will have something that they're passionate about and they're able to kind of convey that to you and to to get you excited about something and we've read mm. books that we never would have picked off the shelf brilliant that's the thing like everyone has their genre but actually it's what's more important is a good story and that happens everywhere in all sorts of things and so mm we've been really lucky to through through our work as the bookshop band to do that but but that's what people get out of mm. libraries and bookshops they you know they don't have a a um, an algorithm to tell you what you should like based on what you like before but instead you have a personal connection to to take you out of that algorithm and to give you something brilliant that but, you would yeah expect. I was thinking then you could you pass that on to other people because other people say well, what books do you recommend and then you mm. can say well, you might like this, but you also might like this because it has this thing and, and mm. you can pass that on. And that's, you know, it's quite contagious, really, isn't it? Yeah. 
I think what I find interesting now, having gone on this 10 year uh, project, which is now a, a group and your love of books, obviously has been in sort of a, it almost more, it's like an itch, isn't it? You can't put something down. You can't put a book down. But now I'm at a position now where we're going to talk about bookshop banned books and maybe as well as libraries to get recommendation for books or independent bookshops, we can come to you for recommendations <laughs> of books. Yeah. In, in your concerts, what I love about your concerts, I saw you at the Pretty Church for the Pretty Folk Festival a couple of years back and it was a beautiful venue, wasn't it? And we caught up very briefly and I sat down at this, in this beautiful church where you just introduced each book by telling a story around a book, bringing the book with you and then playing a song that was inspired by that particular book. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you've got uh, some books that you just didn't think you would enjoy, but as you read it, as we were just talking about earlier, you just thought, this is the book for me, and it really sort of nurtured a, a beautiful song. Are there any books that you can recommend to us? I, for me, I would say one that I didn't think that I would necessarily enjoyed. I heard it was, it was kind of a fantasy thing and I just didn't think, I think before the bookshop band, I definitely was very much into sort of travel writing and, you know, kind of non-fiction stuff mostly, also I thought. And then as soon as we started the bookshop band, it was pretty much all contemporary fiction. And I started, you know, just enjoying these books, these stories for what they were, like we, we were saying. But one book that I, really got into was David Mitchell's uh, The Bone Clocks. So David Mitchell who wrote Cloud Atlas, which I didn't read and I hadn't seen the film, but The Bone Clocks, I, yeah, it was just something that told a story in a different way. It had different narrators all the way through, had different worlds and yeah, I just didn't think that was going to be for me, but the way it was told and there was some kind of rhythmic prose stuff and lots of just so many things that could inspire a song as well and I just enjoyed being in that world or in those worlds and and being transported and did and a it, song come out of that yeah okay. yeah what's the name of the song the song is called the other side and it's on the curious and curious album which is an album sort of in loosely inspired by um books that you might class as fantasy or sci-fi or yeah. curious but I remember when we were writing it it was just before well we were planning our wedding and my head was all over kind of all over the place and I was trying to write this song and it was in a weird timing and I was doing this kind of tapping that was like and it just and it, and it just evolved from that but it yeah it, it played from some of the rhythms in the in the book and I think we were really pleased with it and we got it produced by uh, Richard Evans in Bath he's got a studio in Bath and we got quite excited about yeah, it so the whole yeah. journey from starting the book to finishing recording was was actually quite cool and then we we re, we revived it the other day because yeah. in our lockdown shows we're having to dig we're trying not to repeat songs over the weeks apart from on Friday when we did the um the show for the booksellers week but we um we're trying not to repeat so we're digging really deep into our repertoire and pulling things out that we haven't played for years mm. <laughs> so it's good it's good really good for us yeah and so ben i think it's uh, it's time to reveal your book of uh, recommendations for somerset libraries here's one that i didn't think i'd enjoy so if that's the challenge mm -hmm. that i was like okay right let's give it a go the reason I, I didn't think I'd necessarily enjoy it is that it's the last book of a sequel of, of, a, of a whole section. It's Armistead Morpin, The Days of Anna Madrigal. And so it's his Tales of the City series, which I haven't read, I haven't seen, I know nothing about. And so going straight to the last book of his series, I was like, okay, I, I don't know if I'm going to get into this because you know, I've had a few ones where I've had to go in the middle of a series and it, obviously that you're missing so much backstory but actually I loved it it was it was a very self-contained story taking you actually on a journey to Burning Man Festival and it was it was brilliant you didn't need to know anything else it was a standalone sort of funny glamorous exotic tragic very emotive story and it just gripped you straight away I think we wrote one of our most tragic songs for it sort of deeply sad um, but the book itself is much more than that. It's it's a it's a glorious ride through the uh, Burning Man Festival, really. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that would be my surprise 
yeah, I wasn't expecting to love it, but we did. There's a story waiting inside behind the door as it opens wide and I In celebration of the recent Independent Bookshop Week, I was keen to find out more about what it's like to run an independent bookshop. It seemed the best chance to find out was to actually talk to someone who runs a bookshop. I spoke with Lionel, manager of Brendan Books, based at the Old Brewery Buildings, Bath Place in Taunton, and I asked him what it's like to run a bookshop and what was his story of setting up Brendan Books. Well, it's a long story, that's the first thing. We've been here 32 years this year, and uh, we moved here on the 10th of February, 1989. And why do I know the specific date? Because it was my birthday. We actually exchanged contracts on my birthday. I was working at a place called the Building Centre in London. An opportunity came up and I thought, what should I do with that opportunity? And I thought, the answer's in front of me. I loved, I've always loved books. I did history at university, but I brought more literature books than history books, I think. So I was an inveterate book collector. And I thought, I've thought really hard about it. Of course, I wanted to be a great author and I'm still trying to pursue that now. But second best was to own a bookshop just work with books all the time during the day you know what could be better than that so i went and worked in a bookshop for a year uh the barbican business bookshop in london and the great thing about that was that it was actually closed at weekends because it was in the city and sold business book and the and the great thing about that too was everybody kept leaving which might not sound good so i started off in the till and i did mail ordering and so i did practically every job within a year and at the same time i started looking for a bookshop and that's how I ended up here. There have been big changes over the year so because we, um, we now um, uh, stock second hand as well as new books and that only started about six or seven years ago and that was a response to the times to online book selling so what that's allowed us to do is to differentiate ourselves from other bookshops in town and perhaps online sellers, so that we offer a balance of new books and old books. And it also makes it really interesting, you know, because you can find little gems from the past, as well as the, the really exciting thing about new books, is that nearly every week you see something that has never been around before. You know, it, it's like Christmas every week, you know, it's, it's brilliant. I asked Lionel to tell us about a book that he has enjoyed reading, that he can recommend from his bookshop. One I've really enjoyed is the one by Amor Taos, A Gentleman in Moscow. This is a fascinating, witty read uh, about a count who's stuck in uh, a hotel in Moscow during the time of the revolution and beyond. And it, it's a really witty, fun book. So if you want to cheer yourself up, do read that book. Brendan Books is now beginning to reopen has it been a challenge to reopen the shop and to be able to continue to exist to support the communities? What's the immediate future? Do you feel optimistic now that you're beginning to reopen again? What is the future for Brendan Books, do you think, Lionel? I am optimistic because of the responses we've had since we've been opened. Um, 
we actually opened for collection from the door and for home delivery a couple of weeks before the official opening date. Um, I know some bookshops have been, kept going right the way through where they haven't perhaps had a, where they're new bookshops and haven't had any other option to be furloughed or whatever. Um, and we were encouraged straight away. We immediately got orders. I mean, we have a newsletter that goes out to 1500 people. We run the Taunton Literary Festival each year. And so we've got a quite a big database and where bookshops are lucky as compared with shops that rely on passing trade is that they, they where you do a lot of ordering, you have those contacts with your customers. And so you've got a ready sort of ready base of people that want to use you. There must be some highlights, some things that you just pinch yeah. yourself moments. Tell us yeah. uh, uh, something that springs to mind. There's a highlight of you working and managing Brendan Books. Yeah, well, I, um, I suppose one of the things, one of the obvious things really, is we put on the Taunton Literary Festival, which is in its 10th year. Some of the obvious highlights are, are meeting some of these great authors. You know, like I interviewed David Mitchell, the comedian. Um, I uh, ran off fines. Uh, we've had Douglas Hurd. Um, yes, and also uh, in the last festival, we had Alan Johnson, you know, the ex uh, Home Secretary, Labour MP, um, who's written was an extraordinary trilogy of autobiographical trilogy. Really moving, too. And he's a really nice guy, you know, makes the interview easy as well. And also, we've got a couple of things coming up which will be podcast things you know we've got rachel joyce who wrote the pilgrimage of harold fry a lovely quirky book and we've got um isabel lasada who's written a new book called the joyful uh, environmentalist so very much of the moment of how we can and, and she's been here before and she's a really interesting slightly hope she doesn't mind me saying a slightly wacky person but great fun so that's some of they're two highlights to look forward to, but um, we've had loads of highlights in the past. I suppose that interviewing David Mitchell would have been one of the, one of the real, real coups. Because apart from anything else, it gave me such, so much street cred, because my son, who is quite disdainful of a lot of the things I like, suddenly I was, he was in awe of me, the fact. And, he, and the great thing about it was we actually... <laughs> He was allowed to interview him himself. So, you know, my street cred went up when I interviewed David Mitchell. You've been listening to LibraryCast, brought to you by Somerset Libraries, bringing to you libraries from home. Join us for part two with the Bookshop Band next week, where the Bookshop Band will be talking to us about their performance and their collaboration at the book launch of Philip Pullman's Book of Dust. Plus, they'll be talking about writing music for the Robert McFarlane book, Lost Words. Join us next week for part two with the Bookshop Band.